Hello everyone! As we've tested the Flux One Redux models recently, we've experimented with different image combinations. This allows us to combine various images and characters into a single image, like this one. I've done several image generation tests with the Flux Redux models, and you can use these to create AI characters for cinematic video scenes. Even if you have an e-commerce store, you can use this for virtual try-ons. It works great for that too. Today, we're going to create a character with consistent styles. Previously, we talked about Flux LoRa training, where you can use the easiest tool, the Flux Gym Web UI script. This helps train your AI character to maintain the same consistent face without needing to rely on methods like face swaps, which don't allow for commercial use. Instead, we'll use other tools. Flux is a lifesaver. With Flux LoRa, you can train a consistent character using just 10 to 20 images, and it works really well. Here, we'll use Flux One Redux along with Flux LoRa to utilize the entire Flux ecosystem for creating consistent characters. Previously, Clean AI launched virtual try-ons for AI images and videos, allowing users to create consistent and coherent AI video styles. They use image-to-video methods to bring try-on images into AI videos. Similarly, we can do this with Flux. Flux Redux is very user-friendly and has a ton of potential. I've developed a simple workflow that isn't too complicated and allows you to try different characters while changing backgrounds as well. For this, I'm using Redux Advanced, from the Advanced Redux Custom Nodes. You can find this on the GitHub page or simply go to the Comfy UI Manager, open the Custom Nodes Manager and search for Redux. You'll see the custom node available under the name Advanced Redux Control. This custom node allows you to use Redux with more advanced settings and configurations. For example, we have downsampling factors which simulate the reference image. The lower the number, the closer the output will resemble the reference image. For instance, if I have a character reference image with a red sweater, skirt, black boots, and long brown hair, setting the downsampling factor to 1 will generate an image almost identical to the reference. Increasing the factor to 2 or 3 will introduce more variations in style. The downsampling function focuses on the center crop square dimensions of the reference image. You can combine this with additional settings like center crop, keep aspect ratio, or auto crop with a mask. For this tutorial, I'm using the center crop square. This works similarly to the IP adapter, where the AI focuses on the middle section of the reference image for the clothing of the AI character. I set the weights to one because I want the output to match the reference image as closely as possible. The passing data uses the same conditioning style model, clip vision, as mentioned in the Flux One Tools Redux basic tutorial. If you missed that video, you can check it out for more context. All the data connections follow the same principles, except for the image and mask settings, which differ slightly in the Redux Advanced Custom Nodes. Now, about the masking of the Redux reference image, this is passed through another Redux Advanced Custom Node, referencing the same image as the first node. Essentially, the output from the first Advanced Node is used as the input for the second. I'm also using the Segment Anything tool for segmenting the reference input image. For convenience, I use the Load Image from URL tool from the MTB Nodes package. This package includes advanced tools for loading and filtering images. In this case, I'm using Pinterest images, which are great for finding outfit styles and background ideas. With Christmas coming up, I'm incorporating Christmas-themed images into this tutorial. I'm using a character as a reference for the outfit only. We don't need to replicate everything or copy 100% of the character. So we're using the mask from the segment anything output here where we have the mask preview. We've isolated the character from the entire image using this for the Redux Advanced number two right here along with the same segment anything output image. This process focuses solely on the character while the other background elements are cut out as a black background. This helps the AI focus on the character itself without referencing anything outside that area. Now let's test this using only the reference character to see how it works. First, we'll start with a text prompt. Here, I've written a prompt where the character is doing modeling photography in an elegant pose at a coffee shop. The lady is sitting and having coffee with a dynamic camera angle. This ensures the character's pose and perspective won't be identical to the reference image, keeping the generated outputs more varied and dynamic. Here's the result from my generation. As you can see, the character is sitting in the coffee shop and the outfit matches the Pinterest reference image I used. 
However, the face looks different because I'm using a Laura model for the character. As mentioned in previous videos, using the Flux Gym for Laura training allows you to create custom AI character Laura models. I've trained several AI characters for previous videos and short stories using Flux Laura. Before loading anything, I start by loading the Flux Diffusion model and connecting it to the Laura for the character. Both models are embedded into the Flux Diffusion model. Additionally, I'm using a Realism Laura, which is applied to the output for the first K sampler. The K sampler generates an image like this. Now, you might wonder, what if you want a different reference background for your AI videos, short stories, or virtual try-ons for an e-commerce store? That works too. If I want to create an atmosphere that matches the character's outfit, and not just a coffee shop setting, I add another Redux Advanced Custom node. Enabling this node connects the conditional output from the previous Redux Advanced Custom node to a new node for the background. In this setup, I use the downsampling function with the nearest exact type and keep the mode set to Keep Aspect Ratio. Of course, I set the weights to 1, which means the output will be nearly identical to the reference image in style. Using this reference image, I create another background reference. For example, here's a URL to a Pinterest image of a Christmas-themed dining or living room. This reference is used for the background style. We're not copying or cloning the reference image exactly. The Redux style model works differently. It references the elements in the image and generates a new output inspired by it. Think of it like embedding models in large language models where content is referenced to create a similar yet unique response. For diffusion models, this concept is applied to images. Let's run this setup and see the result. Without changing the text prompt, we'll compare the new image with the initial reference character image. Here's the first image, generated using only the reference character. Now let's generate another image with the Redux Advanced node connected to the background reference image and compare the two results. Okay, we have two generated images. When I test new setups, I usually generate images in batches of two for comparison. Looking at the first image, the background doesn't match the atmosphere or elements of the new reference image. In contrast, the second image reflects the Christmas-themed living room, complete with a fireplace on the side. It still includes the coffee table mentioned in the text prompt, which wasn't part of the reference image. This second image successfully captures the Christmas atmosphere with a fireplace, a Christmas tree, and a white wall in the background. The Redux models replicated the style and elements from the reference image almost identically for the background, but then there's no coffee table or coffee in these two images. Since I used Segment Anything to focus solely on the character's outfit, the AI doesn't include a coffee table or coffee. Instead, it recognizes the style from the second reference image I added for the Redux Advanced. Using the nearly exact setting and keeping the aspect ratio ensures we have the background. However, the table and coffee elements come from the text prompt because those elements don't exist in the reference image. This works well for the AI as it can incorporate additional elements into the generated image based on the prompt. I've noticed that this method provides flexibility to add more elements. For example, you could add fireworks on the ceiling or some laser LED lights, and those details would appear in the AI-generated image. So yeah, that's a quick way to create consistent AI coherent styles while allowing flexibility and customization. For instance, just because you want your AI character to have a consistent style doesn't mean they always have to wear the same clothes or exist in the same environment. Think practically. Movies often show characters in different outfits and settings. We can use that idea in AI image generation to create dynamic outputs where the character remains consistent, but their outfits and backgrounds vary. Here's an example from a previous test I did. The character's face and body shape stayed consistent, but the outfit and background changed. This is entirely doable using the Flux LoRa model. The basic concept involves using Redux from Flux to easily create consistent characters and backgrounds while maintaining the flexibility to experiment with different styles. In this setup, I added a second group called the Refiner group. Here I passed the latent data from the first case sampler into the second group case sampler for further processing. I set the denoise level to 0.4 just enough to introduce slight changes without altering the character's face or pose significantly. 
I connect the positive prompts from the previous group and zero them out. This method lets us conditionally zero out the prompts and pass them to the negative prompts. Essentially, we're flipping the positive prompts into their opposites without needing to recreate or duplicate clipped text. For the K-sampler, I connect the model data from the LoRa load ER. After loading the AI character LoRa and applying the realism LoRa for stylistic consistency, I pass this model data to the second K-sampler. This setup ensures the character's face and body type remain consistent with the LoRa models while applying realism in style. I then preview and save the image. Running this setup again with the same settings, I start with randomized seed numbers to explore variations. Now let's check the results. We've got two new images from the second group. There are slight variations in style and pose, but one of the images stands out as the winner. It follows my prompts, including the coffee and coffee table elements. Although the aspect ratio in this setup isn't landscape, we can use the flux tools for outpainting to expand or adjust the image as needed. It doesn't matter what aspect ratio you're working with, you can adjust that later on. The main focus of this workflow is on the character and background styles. That's all we're concentrating on for now. So, we move on to the second pass in the sampling group, where we refine the details further. You'll notice more intricate patterns on the dress and overall improved detail. The character stays in the same pose and style, but now with enhanced detail on the outfit. Finally, we save the image. I like to use the Save Image Extend nodes because it helps me stay organized by saving images into different folders. That's just my way of keeping things tidy. So far, this has been pretty cool. Let's give it a try. Let's say we're creating an AI video story for Christmas. I generate an image, save it to my folder, and bring it into something like Clean AI. Of course, you can use any AI image or video generator you prefer. This is just an example. Once I upload the image, I can create a prompt like Modeling Catwalk Fashion Try On. This lets the character perform actions or movements I want, rather than just walking randomly, like in this example here. We click Generate and see how it turns out. Here's the result. As with most AI video generators, the image to video feature takes an image from Flux Redux and turns it into AI animations. It's the same concept we've talked about before, using AI video generators to animate scenes from individual images. For example, here's a scene where the camera pans down to a fireplace, and another example featuring a character from my Flux Laura model. Now, this isn't limited to female characters, you can use it for any AI character. In this case, I've got a male character dressed as a modern ninja trying to steal a diamond. I used a background featuring a mansion with a table in the center and a diamond as the inspiration for this generated image. The result is a dynamic scene, the ninja is close up, reaching for the diamond. From here, you could take it to an AI video generator, animate the character holding the diamond, and create a sequence where he runs away. This shows the kind of motion and storytelling you can achieve using these tools. I hope you found some inspiration for using Flux Redux and the Redux Advanced custom nodes. These settings make it easy to create consistent characters without needing face swapping tools or other complex workflows. Thanks to LoRa training, we can maintain character consistency. Once you've got your LoRa models ready, you're good to go. That's all for this video. I hope it gave you some ideas for your AI projects. See you in the next one. Have a great day. See ya.